And coming up next, the Ministry of Education insists the rice distributed to senior high schools, though past their best before date, that the expiry date was wholesome. But the minority in parliament demands further probe and possible prosecution of all persons and the companies involved in this particular issue. This is one that we're seeking our teeth into right now because it's um, generated some disquiet and concern amongst parents who are also looking at this and, and also how things are flowing, uh, playing out quite closely. Now, the minority in parliament, they're demanding the President Kufuado government ensures the immediate arrest and prosecution of the directors of Lamens Investment Africa, the company that's been accused of allegedly repackaging and distributing expired rice to some senior high schools earlier this year. Now, leading the charge, Samuel Okujato Ablakwa is also calling for the urgent national medical screening of all senior high school students who have consumed the alleged contaminated rice. This is Samuel Okujato Ablakwa earlier today. Take a look. We'll, we'll recall that shortly, but but what really is the is the backstory to this? We'll hear let's hear from as well the spokesperson for the Ministry of Education uh, who spoke to us earlier today um, on News Three Hundred and Sixty, explaining the position of the ministry on this matter. Take a look. That indeed uh, the consignment that came into the country by December twenty twenty three. Uh, it was very close or near to its uh, shelf life in terms of the date that had been uh, been on the original labeling, being the best before date. But of course, uh, the company had apparently written to uh, FDA with the aim of seeking to extend the best before date. Right. FDA had to uh, require certain tests on the product before they extended it. But after that was granted, the company, again, from the findings that we made, wrote to FDA and requested FDA to give them an approval. And based on that approval, the company was going to do a repackaging. Of course, if you had read the earlier notice that we brought out, mm. according to the company, they were just doing that to prevent issues of backlash. Because, I mean, people may not really get the whole understanding as to how the product is labeled within a specific date where the best before date was supposed to be elapsed and then an extension has been granted. Okay. So it was that approval that was denied by the FDA. That is where even the company found themselves in trouble when the FDA decided to find them an amount of 100000 mm. So even with regard to the fine, the fine was in relation the red packaging, the fact that they did not get approval for the red packaging mm. and not the wholesomeness of the food. Of course, I, I, I do not have the capacity, the authority, even the expertise to make such determination as to whether or not the food is wholesome. I mean, likewise, okay. the Ministry of Education. Uh, but FDA makes such determination, and I'm sure, uh, obviously, they align with their own internal protocols to be able to arrive with that conclusion. All right. So the most fundamental question is whether or not the food was wholesome and mm. safe. And that the FDA has answered in the affirmative that yes, the food was safe. The second question as to whether they had approval to rebag the food, they didn't have that approval. And that is how come the FDA uh, slash the fine on them. Mm. Well, he speaks, that's Kuskwating speaks for the uh, Minister of Education. There's a private legal practitioner as well. Now, he's explaining that the fine that this company was slapped with by the Food and Drugs Authority was for, for the issue of um, not getting approval for repackaging. Look, let's understand all of this and, and what's the backstory, how things are played out, and whether the Education Ministry's explanation to this matter is one that would really um, stand the test of analysis. Dennis Barberi, what I'm a colleague, Squires here right now. We're going to get into it. We have some documents from the Food and Drugs Authority as well, which we've been looking into quite closely. But Dennis, what are we looking at? Well, so this, this um, we have some correspondence between the FDA and then the company in question in respect of this particular matter. Mm. So let's just start from the point where the company was seeking for an extension of what they call the shelf life of Moshushu white double polished Sortex Indian rice. 
Mm. This is just the brand of rice that they have. That's the name, Mo yes. Shosho. An extension of shelf life simply means that, okay, so the rice came with a certain date which was supposed to expire, but for some reason, they wanted to extend that expiry date. Right. So they made an application to the FDA so that they could get an approval to do so. And this was the response of the FDA. This letter is dated 29th of December, 2023. Mm. The relevant parts of this letter is in respect of the highlighted part where the FDA says that kindly note that the analytical report of the food product you submitted from the Food Research Institute has been reviewed. Mm -hmm. It, however, does not include a report on moisture and mold, which are also critical in making regulatory decisions in situations like this. I see. It goes on to say that samples of the products were also sent to FDA laboratory for analysis indicated at the time of testing to be wholesome. Okay. FDA attached... There's a please find attached the certificate of analysis. Now, with regards to the best before dates as stated on the product, the FDA is, however, unable to grant your request for a shelf life extension since the authority cannot determine the shelf life of products. Shelf life determination is the responsibility of the manufacturer and must be based on the data obtained from the shelf life studies conducted on the product. Okay, so there are a number of things at play here. So yes. on, the, on the issue of the, the, the moisture and mold, which is also critical in making regulatory decisions, yes. the FDA said as of the time of this making this application, this application, it wasn't included. They, they, they didn't have the However, other that. documents reveal that they later went to do that test. I see. Again, there's also the part where it talks about the FDA itself doing an analysis on the products and came to the conclusion that the product was wholesome. Okay. There's also the third bit, which is critical to this particular application. Mind you, the application was in respect of, um, I, I mean, seeking to extend the shelf life. Mm -hmm. FDA says that we are unable to do so because it has to be done by the manufacturer. So essentially, the extension of the, of the shelf life was what? The, uh, extending the expiry date? Expiry date. So the expiry date was December 2023? 2023. 2023. And the company wanted that expiry date extended? Extended, yes. Basically. And so FDA says they can't do that? Unless they go back to the manufacturer of the rice. Okay. Because they do not have the data that is required for that particular job. I see. Now, there's also another letter here. Perfect. Which is coming from the manufacturers. The relevant portions, again, I'll show you, has to do with this. When they are talking about whether or not that shelf life extension was possible. Mm. So it reads, this rice, under the condition for which we have no influence, is the responsibility of the buyer. If it was stored properly, into brackets, dry conditions, regularly fumigated, etc., can usually be consumed within three years from production i.e. should be consumed by December 2024. Mind you, the original date of expiry or best before date was December 2023. 2023. Mm. But they are saying that if they were able to preserve it or to store it well, then it could be consumed up to December 2024. I see. Then based on this, the company makes another application to the FDA. And in that regard, there's another letter here from FDA in response of the second application that they make. Now, this time around, take note of that. This is 15 January 2024. Mm -hmm. We had moved out of 2023, December. Now we are in January 2024. When you look at that letter too, a lot has been said, making reference to the earlier co correspondence, uh, correspondence. But the most important part is here, where FDA says, based on the evaluated information provided above, and that of the FDA's CLSR, analytical report, the attached report, a temporary extension of the best before date of the rice, Moshosho white rice double, that's the name of the rice, can be granted only to 30th April 2024. Mind you, the manufacturer said it could be extended to December 2024. That's subject to the conditions under which this yes, rice they was were Yes, yeah, stored. But FDA says that they could only give them an to extension me to 30th April 2024. But it does not end there. Right. Now there's also another letter here where it does appear that the company was facing challenges selling the rice with that date on its packaging. That's the, 
the December 2023. The December 2023 expiry. still on. Yes. So they write again to the FDA, this time requesting for rebargain re and supply of the products. Now, let's take a look at this part. That's even though they've been granted the extension mm -hmm. to April 2024, they have encountered challenges stemming from public perception, potential political backlash, negative media reportage, and the, and the need for extensive explanation to certain state institutions, such as parliaments. These factors have necessitated a request to repackage the remaining rice from the original sack. The original sack here is the December 2023 expiry date, mm -hmm. which bears the best before date of December 2023. I see. We understand the importance of upholding consumer confidence and compliance with regulatory requirements. Therefore, we kindly seek your assistance in exp expediting the process of rebargain and supplying the remaining quantity of rice ensuring it meets all the necessary quality and standard and safety standards. I see. So in this context, they are seeking the support of FDA or the approval of FDA for them to rebag the 2023 packaged rice to another. With, with a new expiry date? Yes. Of what April we learned later was the fact that, yes, they did so, repack, repackaging it, even without the approval from the FDA, because this response had not, I mean, FDA had not responded to this letter and before. And the company went ahead to, to repackage. In doing so. This rice. Now the rice originally is coming from China. In doing so, we understand again that it then came out in a new package with made in Ghana. And that largely has been the, 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 some of the issues coming up. <coughs> they were fined for that, actually. I see. And that's how come you hear the uh, issue of DP in a fine of 100,000 Ghana cities for the repackaging that they did without the approval of, of the FDA. Perfect points there, Dennis, and, and stay with me a bit. And fortunately, we have someone who could have talked about joining us on the, on the telephone. Um, so Blackwell, good evening. He's a member of parliament for the North Town constituency. He's been leading this particular uh, uh, expose on this matter. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Hello? Hello? Honorable Blackwell, can you hear me? I'm fortunate we lost them. We'll try to Hello? Them. Yeah, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. So the, the education ministry, at least we've heard them from the PRO, you heard him, he's been explaining that the matter on the table with respect to this rise is not about their wholesomeness or otherwise. Because per their reference to the correspondence, the FDA guaranteed the wholesomeness of, of this rise. The issue which we have seen in the letters at least that we have is that on the matter of the expiry date being extended to April 2024, the FDA did not give approval for the repackaging of it with a new package, with a new expiry date. And then also the, the country of origin. This company changed the country of origin by itself from made in India to, to made in Ghana. That the FDA concedes and says, in fact, the Ministry of Education concedes. They say that the company was fined for it. Does that suffice? It does not suffice. And uh, I would need to help you. you uh, TV3, you don't have the full complement of the document. Mm -hmm. what, you, what you have uh, is not complete. What do you have? You need, you, need to, you need to start from where the officials of Lament were arrested. This matter does not begin in January 2024. It begins in December. I will be sending you documents where you will see that officials of LAMES and NAFCO upon a tip-off to the Ashanti Regional Police Command and the Ashanti Regional FDA, they carried out a swoop and arrested the officials of Laments. Specifically, Eli Dobe was arrested, a worker of Laments, the Ashanti Regional Coordinator, and then Mr. Simon Ejay, who is a director of Laments. He's one of two directors. The other director is Mr. Ajefi Mensa. Mm. At the time of the arrest, Mr. Ajefi Mensa was not at the buffer stock storage facility. So that's where you need to start from. 
Now, right. after, this, after this arrest, remember that they were arrested because they were rebagging the rice uh, without authorization. Mm. Uh, they were engaged in a, in, in, in a criminal conspiracy with the buffer stock company. Now, on the, after the arrest on the 20th of December, the Ashanti Regional Police Command, in a letter dated 21st December, a day after, 21st December 2023, addressed to the FDA, requested that the samples they had taken should be examined, should be tested. So that's where you have to start from. Now, the... No, so so let me the, understand the, this. The, after, the, 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 even even the, after the, 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 I just want to find out this. Even after the the fine by the FDA, the company's officials were arrested together with the 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 National Buffer Company officials. They, yes, they, they were arrested. On the twi- yes, on the twentieth of December, okay. twenty twenty three. Right. Yes. Uh, so that's where this whole matter starts from. That that's how come officials got to know for the first time, particularly the FDA uh, officials and then the Ashanti Regional Police Command. That's when they got to know for the first time that this company, Laments, and the National Food Buffer Stock Company were involved in this conspiracy. Remember that the NAFCO has been indicted for not registering that storage facility. So the FDA didn't know about the existence of that storage facility, which is itself a violation of act. 851, the Public Health Act. So after the, the arrest, the Ashanti Regional Police Command then took samples of the rice and requested in a formal letter written and signed by J.J. Boy, the chief superintendent in charge of crime in Ashanti Region. I'll forward all those documents to you, where mm-hmm. they asked for the rice to be tested. On the 6th of February, the full examination results were received by the police and then FDA Ashanti from the FDA headquarters. And that is the test result, which shows that the rice was contaminated. It has high insect infestation. That is the exact word used, high insect infestation. And then it, it also had high fat acidity, which made the rice unwholesome. So you need to have all of these documents. The documents you have are from January, where, you see, after the arrest... So we have a document dated 29th December 2023, and that's going to be on the screen right now. That's the FDA r- responding. Exactly. So, exactly. exactly. And, and, and you will see that, you see from the 29th uh, December letter from the FDA that they recommended both the legal uh, directorate and the management of FDA Ashanti recommended three steps from that letter. You see that one, they said that they will move in to stop the, the rebargain mm-hmm. that was going on. Number yes. two, they said that they were going to ensure that the rice is disposed of. Because at that time, they were convinced that this rice was, was unwholesome. So then was how, what led to they changing then, their verdict? And then, and then number three, you see from that letter that they were going to find the company 150,000 cities. After yes. this memo, after this memo, mm-hmm. a lot of funny things start happening. Uh, suddenly, uh, calls come from above that the Lamens officials should be released, and the Ashanti Regional Police Command had no choice but to release them. Number two, another call comes that, uh, uh, look, we don't have time. You people should release the rice. Let the rice be distributed to the schools. And so uh, on the 1st and the 2nd of February, the rice was distributed to the school. And I have letters. I'll, I'll send you those letters. Where okay. the schools, the schools, the schools signed for the rice. Now, remember that this is rice that had been repacked over 22,000 bags in ECOWAS uh, sacks and the roads right. made in Ghana without expiry dates. The heads of these institutions signed for them. Some of them raised questions about why the rice did not have expiry date, and they were told to shut up. And for fear of being victimized, they did not pursue the matter further. Now, it is important to stress okay. that it is, it is within this period that the company was fined. Remember mm. that when the 
uh, the calls started coming in from above that they should be left because these are highly connected guys. Remember that Lamens should have been blacklisted as far back in 2021. If you read the Auditor General's report of 2021, Lamens was indicted. They are very notorious for distributing or wholesome food. If you read page 133, I'll send you that Auditor General's report, page 133 and page 142. You see that you see that Lamens was indicted by the Auditor General for uh, uh, distributing or wholesome food. And, and, and this was which, in 2021. Which, this the was 20 in 2021. 23 years, three years uh, before the current incident. If, if our institutions had been proactive and had worked in the national interest, we will not be discussing the current criminal conduct of Lamez. Lamez well, should have been blacklisted long ago. Now, when you come to when you come to the what we keep an eye on this one is one thing that I, 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 look I, I, and I can promise you, and then also an hour viewers on this matter because the document that you make reference to also enhances the various angles and understanding of how things are playing out on this matter it's an, an issue of public interest and especially for parents uh, of these schools who we understand have consumed this right so these documents my producer is standing by right now so black could send it and and we're going to also employ them as we go on in the coming days this is not one that we're keeping an, we're taking our eyes off we're keeping an eye on this one in the coming days here on Ghana tonight. But thank you so much, Samuel Okudito Blackwell, as Member of Parliament for the Northtown Constituency, is the chief expose on this particular issue.